Welcome to Taiji's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make three types of different miso soup. So I think nowadays everybody knows what miso soup is, but probably rarely made at home. Miso soup is actually not that difficult to make and you can be very creative with it. You can put pretty much anything in miso soup. But today I'm going to show you how to make basic miso soup with three combinations of ingredients. Then let's get started. Today I'm going to show you three different types of miso soup. Of course you don't have to be limited by this, you can be very creative, but I'm just going to show you very basic miso soup. So the first one I'm going to show you is a very typical miso soup with wakame, dried seaweed and tofu and scallion. Scallion matches to any miso soup. And then second one I have eggplant and onion and third I have spinach and shiitake mushroom. For the broth, I'm not going to make my own dashi today, I'm just going to use dashi powder. But I'm going to make another video on how to make dashi from scratch, well, from kombu and katsuo bushi, uh, bonito flakes. Then for the miso, there are three types of miso. Red, medium uh, or mixed or white miso. Before I start cooking miso soup, I'm going to show you the different types of miso. Here I have a red miso or dark miso medium, mixed miso, and here white miso. So I'm going to start with this very dark miso. We call it red miso. This comes from my region. This is Nagoya, where I come from, and we have this very, very dark miso. A lot of people, I think, in other regions don't really like this. They think it's too much, but for us, this is our kind of soul food. See how it's like almost black, brown. We call this red miso because when we dissolve this in the soup, in the broth, it comes kind of like red color. And then here we call this awase miso or regular miso. It's brown, but I think in the package it does say red miso, aka miso. But for us from our region, it's not really aka miso. This is regular miso. We also call it awase miso, which means mixed miso. And here we have white miso. Well, this doesn't look very white. This is pretty yellow, but really, really white miso is much more white, light yellow color. That's the miso that they use in Kyoto. So the flavor, the tendency is that as dark as it gets, it gets more salty and I would say richer the taste. The main reason why they have different color is that how long it takes to fermentate. So a miso, they're all made from fermented soybeans and depending on how long it ferments, also depending on the different bacteria they use, the color differs. For this kind of red dark miso, they age from about half a year to four, five, six years. And then these usually half a year to a year or so. Tendency wise, the white miso tends to be a little bit sweeter. So let's start cutting. I'm gonna start cutting the scallion first. So it comes as the condiment at the very end for all of them. So don't worry if you can't slice them as thin as I can now. It took me a while to be able to do this as well. It took me a couple years that I will be able to cut like this thin. So it's not, not a big problem if you can't cut this thin. And then here I have, it says silken tofu, silk tofu. So we have two types of tofu. Uh, one is kinugoshi, silk tofu, and the other one's momen, which means cotton. So kinugoshi is much smoother and momen is a little bit firmer, but I've seen some tofu which is sold in Germany or America, where it's kind of like spongy. If you have the texture of tofu that is like spongy, then it's really not the right tofu. Then you want to buy that is really soft. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to open this up. So it needs to be like swimming in this kind of water. So I'm not going to use all of it today. I'm just going to use like a fourth. So tofu should have this kind of almost jelly, jello-y uh, texture. So I'm just going to cut this into small pieces. So that's finished. Then I'm going to cut up the eggplant. I think I'm going to use the whole of it. It's probably too much. And then 
onion does not really rule to cutting the ingredients. They need to be not too big, just bite-sized pieces. So I'm going to So that's finished. And then lastly, so the spinach is already washed in small pieces, so I'm just gonna cut up the mushroom. Here are the different ingredients. One, two, three. And then let's start cooking. So I'm going to cook the three miso soup at the same time. In each pot, I'm going to add one cup of water. And then I'm going to heat them all with high heat. And in each pot I'm going to add in dashi powder. So it says this is 5 gram and miso soup for 5 portions. So I'm going to use 1 gram spoon. So this is a fifth teaspoon. So if you have a teaspoon then a fifth of that. And for onion and eggplant, I'm going to add in the onion now. So all the pots are boiling, I'm going to turn off these two, because tofu doesn't need to be cooked. And here I'm going to put in the mushrooms, because it doesn't take that long to cook. And then into the onion, I'm going to add in the eggplants. So I think it's a bit too much, so I'm not going to add all. I'm going to let this cook for about 2-3 to three minutes, until the eggplant gets cooked through. So I think eggplant has been thoroughly cooked, I'm going to turn on the heat for the rest of the miso soup. And then here I'm going to add in the spinach. So now I'm going to add in the tofu. And let them all come to a boil. So they've all come to a boil, I'm gonna turn off the heat for all of them. So when you make miso soup, please add the miso at the very very end. Because of two reasons. One, due to the nutrition. A lot of the nutrient gets broken up when it's heated too high. So you want to do it at the end. And secondly, because of the aroma. The miso aroma is very fine, so if you boil miso soup, then it'll lose the uh, fine aroma that miso has. So the amount of miso that you want to use for miso soup is about one tablespoon. So this is about, about exactly one tablespoon of miso. Once you get used to it, you kind of know how much you need. Of course, each person has different taste buds, so some people like it heavier, some people like it lighter. So that's according to your taste. And then what you want to do is you don't want to put it directly into the broth. Instead, you want to use this kind of small colander and then let it dissolve in here. So that you don't have like a chunk left. Like so. If you don't have a small strainer like this, then you could use like a ladle and you do this inside a ladle or you could put in here, a little bit of soup, and then dissolve in small portion, and then back in. So that's finished. And then for here, I'm going to add in the awase miso. So here you have some leftover chunks. These are soybeans leftover. Some people throw it away. I think it's a waste to throw it away, so I'm just gonna put back in and let it dissolve because soybeans are very good for you. Here I'm going to put in the shiro miso, white miso. So you see this doesn't have any soybean chunks. So that's finished. As you see, this is white miso and this is red miso. So you kind of see how they are very different. So this is more white when you dissolve it. And this looks kind of reddish dissolving water. So let's serve. So into this I'm going to add a little bit of wakame. Not too much because they're going to grow a lot. And here, eggplant and onion. 
and here the shiro miso and shiitake and spinach. I'm going to add in the scallion here and a little bit of to the each. And we're ready to eat. Yeah, looks good. Well, I don't know. It's very unusual to have three different kind of miso soups. So I'm gonna start with the red miso, aka miso, miso soup. So this is really my hometown miso soup. So with the tofu and wakame, itadakimasu. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this is my soul food. Hmm. So excuse me for slurping. Uh, in Japan, we slurp. That's kind of part of our culture. I think it tastes better if you slurp because when you slurp, you're inhaling oxygen with the sauce, and then most of what you taste is actually smell. So taste is enhanced when you slurp. Mmm, mmm, this is really good. And I think I've seen some sommelier who tastes the wine they slurp. So why should it be wrong? So, then I'm going to have the awase miso with eggplant and onion. Mmm, okay, this is also good. Mmm. Mmm, this is really distinct difference in the taste. This is more round, a little bit sweet. Mmm. Mmm, okay. Mmm. So lastly, the shiro miso with spinach and shiitake mushroom. Mmm. Okay, the taste is more smooth. It matches the spinach really well. Mm, I'm surprised because I don't use shiro miso very often. This is a good surprise for me too. Mm. Mm. So back to aka miso, red miso, my hometown miso. Mm. Oh, this just hits me. Mm. Mm. So I know some people who don't like aka miso because it's, I don't know, too rich or too much, but I grew up with this miso so. Awesome miso, a regular miso. Mm. So if you try different miso, you'll really notice very distinct difference in the taste. Mm. Mm. This is also good. I think I, I used to eat this kind of miso as well. I think our neighbor made homemade miso. It tastes kind of like that. And we used to get it like probably every year. Mm. And shiro miso again. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's, your taste is really, really different. Mm. What a lot of people do also is that people mix up the miso and then flavor of the miso will layer, so to say, and you get a really complex flavor of the miso. So I would really urge you to try different type of miso. And I've made videos on different cooking with miso and they will taste distinctly different when you use different type of miso. Please try different things because cooking ultimately uh, there's no right answer. You just try different things and then see what fits you the best. And of course, rice is always good with miso soup. Really delicious. Oh, that was delicious. It was also surprising for me because I never tasted three different types of miso at the same time to compare. And yeah, they tasted really, really different. And as you saw, making miso soup is really not that difficult and you can pretty much put anything in it. You can put it in like broccoli, cabbage, potatoes, zucchini, carrots, daikon, white radish, also like asparagus or paprika. And I've seen like kind of innovative miso soup with like bacon or tomato or eggs. There's really no limit to making miso soup. Just put in whatever you want and there's really no right answer to cooking. So please try it home yourself and let me know how it went in the comment below. If you liked the video, please subscribe and I look forward to see you in the next video. Bye.